to celebrate Rustin's heroic life, Reveille commissioned an original piece of music, making its world premiere this weekend. To introduce the work, we are pleased to welcome to the stage composer Nehemiah Luckett. such an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you to Keith Koster for this opportunity and to this amazing chorus and to you, the community. When Keith asked me if I would be interested in writing a piece about Bayard Rustin, his collected writings, Time on Two Crosses, was the top book on the to-read pile next to my laptop. I read through the book a number of times, taking notes of exceptional quotes and ideas. But Rustin is an excellent writer, so I realized I had over 20 pages of text. <laughs> I would read through these quotes daily, torn over how these words, written decades ago, still felt so relevant. Every lyric for this piece was taken directly from his writings and speeches. Montgomery Diary, 1956. After a mass indictment and release, Protest leaders gathered at Dexter Avenue Baptist Church and sang these words, we shall all stand together till everyone is free. We know love is the watchword for peace and liberty. The next day, Reverend King invited Rustin to attend a meeting with the protest committee. The meeting centered around these five prayers, a prayer for the success of the meeting a prayer for the strength of spirit to carry on nonviolently, a prayer for the strength of body to walk for freedom, a prayer for those who oppose us, a prayer that all may live in justice and equality. Writing in 1967, Rustin ruminated on the relationships between the peace movement and the civil rights movement. When all is said and done, we are citizens of a world in crisis. The universe of human suffering is everybody's universe. Moreover, it may well be that the solution of one problem has implications for the solution of another. From his address to the Anti-Defamation League in 1968, what is truly at stake is whether we can band together in a great political movement to bring about the socialization of this nation where it needs to be socialized, or whether we are going to permit the nation we love to be torn asunder in a race war. That is our problem. That is our challenge. From a speech delivered to the Philadelphia chapter of Black and White Men Together in 1986, first, the gay community cannot work for justice for itself alone. Unless the community fights for all, it is fighting for nobody, least of all itself. Second, gay people should not practice prejudice. It is inconsistent for gay people to be anti-Semitic or racist. These gay people do not understand human rights. Third, gay people should look not only at what people are doing to us, but also what we are doing to each other. Fourth, gay people should recognize that we cannot fight for the rights of gays unless we are ready to fight for a new mood in the United States, unless we are ready to fight for a radicalization of this society. I wrote the following words as I was leaving with Reverend Billy and the Stop Shopping Choir for Ferguson, Missouri, following the murder of Mike Brown in 2014. As a child, I was obsessed with magic and fantasy worlds and superheroes, thanks to my big brother. One day I was near tears as I realized that the possibility of my living in a world where I could come to the aid of people who were being mistreated or taken advantage of with magic was zero. My mom asked me, what's wrong? Through the tears I responded, I don't have a superpower. Without missing a beat, she responded, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but can you keep a secret? I remember my tear-filled eyes glancing up from the green carpet past the pink tiles of the bathroom floor where my mom was getting ready for bed 
and into her eyes, she said, you have a superpower, love, love. Let that be the beginning and the ending. This is an excerpt from a post I published the morning after Pulse, the Pulse Massacre in 2016. Love. Saturday night, I had just arrived in Munich. My partner and I decided after many weeks of hard work and no time that we would go out. We went from gay bar to gay bar, having a drink, meeting friends, looking for the best music to lure us out onto the dance floor. We ended up at a bar aptly named New York and danced until the morning birds started to sing and the first rays of sunset, sunlight began to break through the night. After a few hours of sleep, I checked my email and saw that I needed to edit some orchestrations that I had been working on. A few hours later, Florian, my husband, woke up and asked, did you see what happened in Orlando? To say this could have been us is an understatement. The stamps from the gay bars were still fresh on our arms. Love. Any group that tells you to hate, that promotes killing people you disagree with is wrong and inherently evil, and we have to teach that. I don't care if it is a government a religion. It is wrong and should not be tolerated. For those of us who work inside of these institutions, we have to make this clear. We are not going to take it. Hate and fear are used to divide and weaken us. Don't fall for it. What is it really all about? Love. As recorded in Rustin's 1956 diary, we shall all stand together till everyone is free. We know love is the watchword for peace and liberty. Our challenge, we know. Love. 
We are citizens of a world in crisis. 